was once a peddler who arrived with his pack of mountains of a six-hour walk to the nearest inn. The farmer and his sons agreed and acted very glad to have him. And they were. So glad, in fact, that before the sun came up again, they had murdered the peddler, robbed him, and buried his body under the dirt floor of the shed behind the kitchen. They got away with it, too. As the years passed, more settlers came to that region. The son who had inherited the house sold it, moved further west where he could carry on the family tradition undisturbed. The new owners were a perfectly law-abiding and God-fearing family, but they had no more knowledge of the peddler than if he had never existed in the first place. Although the peddler's skeleton moldered beneath the floor, his troubled spirit was still too upset to leave. The new people ate all their meals in the big kitchen only a few feet away from the peddler's grave. But they were totally unaware of him. They didn't even know his name. While he didn't relish spending eternity in the shed, the peddler's ghost was determined that someone should realize he was buried there before he moved on. It became an obsession. So he began by opening the kitchen door that led to the shed. Next morning, while the peddler watched, the farmer's wife came in to make breakfast. She slammed that door without even looking at it. That night, the ghost opened the door again. At dawn, the eldest son walked right through without noticing, tramped over the grave, and out the back door of the shed to the woodpile. On the third morning, the farmer came through from the outside with a bucket in each hand and kicked the door shut behind him. After a week of this, the peddler's ghost began opening the door by day as well as by night. All that happened this time is that the children were blamed for letting in drafts, and the children accused each other of being the culprit. This caused a bit more stir, but the peddler still wasn't getting anywhere. When the door slowly swung open in full sight at breakfast, the farmer told his eldest son to fix the latch. The boy tinkered for the better part of the morning. When he finished, he showed off his handiwork to his father. But it didn't last very long. The farmer said he'd fix it himself. Took the whole next day to do it, but before the family went to bed that night, the farmer had installed a small but sturdy lock on the door. He hung the key on a nail driven into the frame. The peddler was not pleased, but neither was he deterred at what the farmer had done. At dawn, the door stood open as usual. The farmer began sleeping with the key on a cord about his neck. Still, the door kept opening. The farmer rehung the door, sanded the sill, checked the pintles, and added a strong bolt under the lock. Now the ghost was tired of being polite.
The farmer took to his bed for three days. When he recovered, the farmer put the door back on its hinges and then pretended it didn't exist. He ordered the family to go in and out of the house by the front door every time they needed kindling. This did not suit the ghost at all. For a time, he remained silent by way of apology. But after a week had passed, he began slamming the door at intervals. The farmer and his family ignored it. Finally, the peddler could bear it no more. As soon as it was daylight, the farmer and his eldest son attacked the pile of debris with the intention of hauling it away and burning the lot. They displaced a good deal of the dirt floor in the process. They also displaced a leg. The whole family gathered and gaped as the farmer uncovered the rest of the bones and the shredded remains of the peddler's pack. Everyone was thinking the same thing, but no one dared say it. The eldest son picked up a corroded piece of metal and blew the dust off it. It was a watch case, broken, but inscribed with a name. The farmer peered at the engraving and read the name aloud. Samuel Pym. Behind them, the peddler sighed. Yes. Samuel Pym was his name. The farmer called in the constable and the minister, and between them all, it was decided that the bones belonged to someone cruelly murdered and deserving of a decent burial. The next Sunday, the bones were reinterred in the local burying ground beneath a simple stone reading, Samuel Pym. After that, kitchen door behaved itself.